Hey everybody, how's it going? So in today's video, we're gonna be going through how to generate images using a text prompt uh, with stable diffusion on Replicate. Um, so I just have here some examples pulled up. I just went to Google Images uh, and searched stable diffusion. And just to give you an example uh, to see what we're trying to do here, uh, here's an example, just an astronaut on the horse. This is kind of like a classic stable diffusion example. So it's sort of a uh, photorealist, photorealistic uh, picture that was generated with just a few lines in a text prompt. Uh, so this is what we're going to be trying to doing. Uh, this is what we're doing here. Uh, we're going to be doing it in Python. So actually, this is only going to take uh, probably only 10 lines of code or something like that. Uh, we're going to be calling the we're going to be calling the replicate API. So you know, calling a uh, machine learning API, um, there is some advantages here. Obviously, you would not have to run your own machine learning infrastructure on your computer, which is very expensive. You need really uh, you know, like really good um, sort of commercial hardware. Uh, you can kind of avoid all that uh, and run it on a platform. Now, keep in mind, um, you know, to get started on replicate, uh, it is free. Um, for I think the first maybe 50 or so requests. But after that, it can cost anywhere from like one tenth of a cent to um, about at about two cents per generation. I find that it averages to be about half of a cent per generation, if that gives you an idea or just a heads up here. So I'm actually gonna hop over to replicate.com. Um, so you can see here, I have already signed in. You can sign in with your email or GitHub account and it should lead you to this page right here. Um, so there is a section here called run models. Um, you know, it gives you a few different options here. You can do Node.js, which is JavaScript. Uh, but for this video, uh, we are going to be doing Python. So let's go ahead and click uh, that option. So it gives you a few instructions to get started here. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to be using the replicate SDK. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and try to follow these instructions here. Um, so I will actually hop over to, you know, uh, VS code here, uh, before, you know, sort of doing this, uh, you might pause, um, if you don't already have a code editor and Python installed, uh, to make sure you have Python, you can type into the, uh, terminal Python dash dash version. And you can see here, um, I'm currently using, uh, Python 311. Um, it shouldn't matter what exact version you have any Python three should be completely fine here. Um, let's, so let's actually go ahead and run this pip install. Uh, but before we do that, um, I'm going to be creating a virtual environment, uh, which means you know, we're gonna create an isolated environment. So all the packages that we install with pip are only gonna be contained with this packages instead of being installed on our global file system. Uh, so you can do that by running virtual env space venv. Uh, this venv is just the name, it can be whatever you want, but we're gonna be using venv, venv uh, here. Um, keep in mind that you have to have installed uh, Python virtual environment first. If you don't already have it, you can run, I believe it is uh, Python dash virtual env. Uh, I would double check on Google though. So we can go ahead and run that here and you can see that it has been created. Um, so what you can do um, on Mac, um, it should be similar on Windows. This is on Mac or Linux. You can run venv slash bin slash activate. I believe on Windows it is slash v, you run the script v, env slash source of activate. Uh, it should be similar though. Okay, so now that we have our virtual environment installed, uh, let's just go ahead and get a few packages here uh, so we can get replicate requests. And let's also install uh, python.env to uh, hold our uh, environment variable for the replicate credential. Okay, let's go ahead and try to install these three packages. Alrighty, it looks like everything is good and well. So the next step we want to do is actually just get our replicate API token here. So the steps that they use um, is just running export replicate API token. Um, but I personally don't prefer that. I actually prefer uh, prefer using a uh, .v uh, .env file. Uh, but if you want to do it this way, that's completely fine. Um, just keep in mind that if you restart your computer or restart a terminal, uh, this might, might be lost. Uh, this is why I kind of prefer this method. Uh, so what you can do is actually just copy that and you, you want to modify it a little bit. You just remove the export and add double quotes and you know in a file called uh, .env or period .env. Um, and by the way, uh, don't worry about this. Uh, you know, you can see that I'm exposing my API token, uh, but that's okay. I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna delete the credential after this video. 
uh, so you <laughs> don't try to uh, steal my account already. Um, so, you know, again, following the instructions, the next step is to sort of uh, use the replicate SDK to run the replicate.run function. Uh, so let's try it out. Uh, so I'm actually going to create a Python file called uh, Python underscore diff uh, dot pi to sort of, you know, be diffusion. Uh, but you can call this whatever you like. It does not matter. Um, so we can see here we got uh, replicate imported and we are, you know, executing the replicate.run. Um, I'm actually just going to make a small, a few small changes here. Uh, so we can actually just uh, import the load env function and um, call the uh, load env function here. This will load our um, credential that it is expecting. It's going to load our replicate API token uh, so that we can successfully authenticate, uh, authenticate the API. Now we are running the replicate.run function here, uh, but one thing is that we're not really, uh, we, we won't be able to see anything. Uh, this re returns the list of um, generated images. Uh, so to actually see what we're doing here to see if it works, um, we can actually call the, um, you know, we can we can sa um, save the output to, you know, uh, save the output to the output variable and sort of print it in console. Uh, and one thing you can also do um, is use the pretty pin, pretty print function that's in Python. Um, it shouldn't make too much difference, but for sort of like larger um, uh, outputs, you know, it, ha it can uh, do it in a clean way, and it's uh, it's a really cool function to use. Okay, so let's actually just um, try to run this and see what happens. So we can use the uh, Python uh, uh, run, you know, so Python uh, Python diff .py. And um, let's see what happens. Um, so obviously it might take a few seconds to run here, but we can see in a few seconds here, it should pop out with the results. And maybe just a few more seconds, you know, keep in mind that these are sort of uh, very large uh, machine learning models with a lot of parameters. Uh, they can take, um, you know, so a, lot, a long time to run. Um, so actually one thing we can do as well, um, we can hop back over here while it's still running. We can go to the dashboard and see, oh yeah, so it did pop up. I think it actually just finished. Um, you can see um, all your runs here, like all your predictions that you're doing and you know when they happens and then what's the result. You can click on each one of them. So we can see here from that run, uh, we got the results. Um, so let's actually just go to this link and see what it looks like. Um, so we were just, again, just using the example here and it created this image. Um, we can see the prompt, a 19th century portrait of a wombat gentleman. Um, so looks all good and well, um, but let's actually go back to replicate. I want to also show you guys how you can uh, switch the model to something else. Keep in mind that in this API, um, the first parameter is this sort of like long weird string. This is actually an ID that represents what model that you're using on replicate. Um, and so you can actually um, easily swap it out. So we're using stable diffusion. Uh, let's try to do um, SDXL, which is stable diffusion XL. Uh, this is considered to be um, one of the more uh, capable um, stable diffusion models or variants. Uh, so we can just go over to string here or API here. And what we can actually do is just pull that model ID. Uh, that's all we really need. Uh, and maybe maybe we'll, we'll actually, uh, whoops. Uh, maybe we'll actually pull the uh, prompts that we're using that they're using as well. Uh, sorry, I'm having a bit of difficulties with um, with copying it over. Um, we can just grab that and then oh, whoops, grab the uh, prompt as well. Already, and we can see what happens. And if you guys are also wondering as well. Uh, I'm not a regular Mac user, so uh, if, if I look like I'm struggling here, it's because my I'm usually on my Windows computer, which is not working right now. Uh, I broke it <laughs> uh, for for various reasons. Um, but so I just swapped out the um, model ID with you know a different SDXL model ID and with this new prompt here. Um, so let's actually look at this results. Alrighty, cool. Um, so. You can play around with this with the parameters more. Uh, obviously, like this output does not look quite as cool uh, as some of their examples. This is sort of uh, a more cartoonish version. 
uh, more cartoon version. Um, but it can give you an idea, you know, uh, this is still, you know, pretty cool output. This is fully generated by just a text prompt. Um, and I can also show you um, just as an idea, if you go to playground, um, you can see all of the um, variables that you can pass in or different parameters that you can modify. Uh, the very, very important ones are within height. Um, seed is a big one right here. Um, if you want all the outputs to kind of fit, fit, uh, follow a similar style or pattern, um, set that to any you know any sort of number um, that would be like a constant, like maybe set it to 100, or you can play around with that as well if you want sort of consistent outputs, uh, yeah, width and height, um, as well as um, negative inputs or negative prompt is very important. Uh, you can sort of use a comma separated list of um, sort of variables or styles that you want to like not incorporate. Um, sometimes the models will over accentuate certain patterns. Um, you know, sort of you, you know, if you're generating images, you could sort of use like cartoon as a negative prompt um, sort of um, token. So, you know, if you don't want it to be cartoon, if, it's, if, if it keeps generating cartoonish images and you don't want that, you could do sort of cartoon as a negative prompt um, token. And of course you can play around with this, with this as well. Um, so that looks good. Um, and I guess while we're here, um, I'll show you guys sort of um, one last thing you can do. Um, if you're sort of making these requests, uh, one thing you might want to do is down download the image. Sort of it returns you this link, uh, but it might be helpful to actually like download the images um, to your local machine. Uh, so why not create a function to do that? Let's do it real quickly, right? So we get the result as an image URL. Um, and maybe you want to pass in the file name that you want to save it as already. So um, what we can actually do is um, using the requests package that we sort of um, installed earlier, uh, we can do request.get. Um, so doing a HTTP request, a git operation on the output URL and say um, simply if the response is a 200, uh, then we can uh, save the file with file name being, alrighty, uh, we'll do right there. Bear with me here um, as file, I would believe. Um, okay. And we can do file.write response.content. Um, and I think that actually should work well. Uh, we could also just throw an if here um, failure <laughs> if something uh, went wrong. So we got with open uh, as file, print the content, looks good. Uh, so if you look at the output here, you can actually see um, that it prints a list of URLs. Um, so since we're just running one example, what we can actually do, whoops, is run the download image on the output zero, which is the uh, very first index of the output. So let's just rerun that same thing and see what happens. So again, you know, it might take a, a few minutes here, or sorry, a few seconds. It, it shouldn't take minutes. Um, another point of this as well, um, this replicate platform, um, really what they're doing under the hood, uh, whoops, I forgot the file name. Um, let's just say output.jpg. So Really what they're doing under the hood here is they are invoking an AWS Lambda function on their own sort of private uh, AWS infrastructure. Um, so it's sort of a serverless function that they're doing. Um, and usually with serverless functions, um, you know, if you don't call them for a while, uh, you would have to do a, uh, what is called a cold start. Uh, so actually like sort of booting up the server and then running it again. Um, you know, a cold start takes a lot longer than a, a warm, you know, so a, a warm start or a warm run. Um, so, essentially, in periods where you're sending requests or there's a request recently, um, it would do a a warm start uh, and just sort of invoke the function right away. But if it's cold, you have to you have to wait for the server to start. Um, so, what if you wanted to actually do, um, you could. I won't you know go into it in this video, but you could actually create a function that um, sort of or create something that invokes the um, synergistic request, maybe does a generation just once every 30 seconds, and just to keep it warm. Uh, and that will actually keep your um, generation times like very low, less than 
uh, 10 seconds most of the time properly. Okay, so we can see here using that download function, we actually got the output on our local machine. Um, and the file was called output.jpg because that's what we passed into our function. Alrighty, so we got here our cool new stable diffusion image that was generated. So that is actually just going to conclude this video. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, you know, please like and subscribe if this was helpful at all. And I, I would love any feedback and um, I will see you guys in the next video.